welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate. Today's the first full week of April, and it's going to be a great week. We're going to make it so, and I'm so glad you're tuning in wherever you might be. Today's going to be an episode that I've pulled from the archives that will jumpstart us into spring. Now, this is an episode that actually comes from the very first season um, of The Simple Sophisticate, and one of the reasons I really love this episode is because of the petit plaisir. It's one of my favorite recipes and was actually the first recipe that I premiered on the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. The show notes have all been updated to include the link to that video as well as walk you through why I love it so much. Now, the episode I'm going to share with you today is episode 29, Why Not Spring Forward? And I don't know about you, but I love the start of spring season. And just uh, a few hours before I taped uh, this introduction, the boys and I were outside. We got caught in a bunch of rain, which was actually really nice because it loosened the soil and we planted some fresh new daily leaves. We weeded the front boulevard and uh, added some compost to the Marion berries. It was a lot of fun to get my hands in the dirt. And then the sun came out after all that rain and hail, and it was just truly refreshing. So with that said, I thought this would be the perfect episode for today. And I just want to give you a heads up. This was our first season, a different microphone, a different, entirely different uh, tech setup. However, I still think you're going to really enjoy this episode. So let's get to it. Episode 29. Why not spring forward? In just a few days, a new season will be beginning, as we all know. For us in the Northern Hemisphere, on the 20th, spring will have officially arrived, whether it feels like it or not. Although I have to admit, here in the Pacific Northwest, it feels very much like spring and I'm absolutely loving it. For my Aussie readers, for my New Zealand readers, for anyone in the Southern Hemisphere, fall begins. So yet another season, a new season. And so while today we're going to talk about this idea of how to spring forward, it isn't necessarily associated with the season of spring, although that is what inspired today's episode. Now, a couple years ago, I shared a list of 12 simple ways to prep for the actual season of spring. And while these are definitely activities and seasonal habits that I thoroughly look forward to, like that seasonal facial, cleaning out the drawers and closets, things like that, or even just making sure I have sunscreen on hand, I highly recommend them, but I'm going to go a little deeper today. So in today's episode of The Simple Sophisticate, I'm going to ask you this question, why not? spring forward. Why not? After all, if we desire to want to spring forward, we must be willing to let go so that we have as much momentum and as much possibility of being propelled as far as we want to go, right? So we have to unburden ourselves of those things that are weighing us down unnecessarily. Think about a deciduous tree, for example. When fall arrives, the leaves begin to turn those glorious autumnal shades of orange and red and yellow as the moisture seeps from them. And then they eventually, as we know, fall to the ground and we get to either rake them or walk through them or crunch on them whenever, whatever it is that we're doing. In order to be free in the spring, the tree must be free of these leaves. In order to burst forth at its most potential, to reach its most potential, the leaves from the past must no longer linger on the branches. So too must we unburden ourselves from the excess that is no longer serving us. I know that sounds simple, and I know it's not the same breath. I really do. I know this is not easy, but if we can think about it at the simplest terms, and then we'll talk about some ways that we can do this. Whether it is simply the clothes we no longer wear, or items in our homes that simply are taking up space that we should donate or sell, or something more empowering us to let go of limited thinking, fearful thoughts that we maybe have having that are holding us back, that are keeping us in the current state of our lives that are no longer serving us. Whatever those unnecessary things are, I encourage you, and I am doing it right along with you, 
to let go of those things that we may, may not realize are standing in our way, but when we take a little closer examination, we realize they're not serving us well anymore. Maybe they did in the past. And that's the thing. There may be some things that we, we know they worked and they got us somewhere positive, but now they're not. In fact, they may be hurting us. And that's where the self-examination needs to happen. So today the discussion is going to focus on four ways to be clear about where we want to go, eliminate what prevents us from getting there, and help to maintain the progress we wish to see occur. Okay, so let's get started. Number one is to craft our personal mission statement. Let me share with you a quote from Stephen Covey. You may have heard of this book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Quote, fundamentally, your mission statement becomes your constitution. Like the United States Constitution, it is at its core fundamentally changeless. The solid expression of your vision and values, it becomes the criterion by which you measure everything else in your life. So while his book was originally written in 1989, Stephen Covey's success of how to maintain or to create the life that you wish and everyone's definition of what we're pursuing will be different. And he keeps that in mind as we go forward. He write, writes about with regards to personal goals as well as business and leadership goals. Thousands, probably millions have poured over this. I remember the first time I got my hands on it, it was up in my dad's bookshelf. And I remember thinking, this has got to be really, this is going to be a great piece of work to read because, hey, it's very direct, how to be effective. And, and successful people are going to be doing these things. And of course, you know, I want to be successful. And so I want to be effective. And so I was like, ha ha, simple title. I'm going to grab it. And I think I was probably either in college or just out of college. And I did read it but I know I did not understand it at the level that I needed to in order to understand what he was talking about. And so since I have read it again and again and again, and each time it makes more sense, especially depending on where I am in my life and what I'm trying to hone. For example, I have really dove, in, dove into this whole idea of mission statements. And I remember creating my first personal mission statement about 10 years ago. And it took a while to create it, but he has three simple components that we should include. And I think as long as we address these three simple things, although they're not simple, they take time. Then whatever we create based on answering these questions is going to be ideal for us and everyone's will be different. So here are the three components. First one, answer this question. What do you want to be with regards to your character? Number two, what do you want to do with regards to your contributions and your achievements? And lastly, what are your values and principles upon what being and doing from number one and number two are based? And in the show notes today, podcast 29, I will share a link uh, that you can go to that will provide a long list of examples of personal mission statements. You can even take a look at my blog's mission statement, The Simply Luxurious Life. I'll provide a link for that as well. And you'll kind of see a theme in all of them. They're all going to be really different. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of it. But at their core, they answer these three questions for that individual. Now, you can write a personal mission statement. You can also write a business mission statement or a family mission statement. There are many different types of mission statements that can be created. Now, as I was writing my mission statement over 10 years ago, as I said, I had no idea that looking at it now, much of it doesn't need to, does not need to be changed. Now, based on certain circumstances in my life and how different things have moved forward, because we can't predict how our futures are going to move forward. There are things that I had to tweak out, but not major core things, just maybe specific things that I probably didn't need to put down. But it's okay to put those down too, because it gives you clarity. It gives you focus. And that's one of the things he talks about is how our mission statement if we are principle driven, and that's why we have to include that third question. If we are creating our mission statement around our core principles, then our mission statement and our, 
our, our direction really won't change, even though our lives and the events in life, things that we have absolutely no control, and there are many of those as we know, will constantly be changing. This should give us comfort then. So creating our mission statement will take time. It may happen in one afternoon, but it may be something you'll want to revisit. It may be something you'll want to write a rough draft and then go back and tweak. But I encourage you to create this. And, and whether you're, you know, it could be you're religious, you're family oriented, you are driven by work, you are driven by family, you're driven by friends, whatever it is, those things can be part of it. But it doesn't mean that someone else's mission statement for that particular set of beliefs has to be entirely yours. You may take components of that and components of being a good family member and components of being a good business leader, but you don't have to incorporate the entire mission statement of that entity. Make your own, make your own, and you'll be that much more satisfied and comfortable and confident going forward as you make decisions, able to go in the direction you want. And even if you get off course, as long as you know what is at your core, it's easier to get back on track easier to get back on track. Number one is to create a personal mission statement. Okay. So now that we know where we want to go and how, where we're going to spring forward to, I should say, let's now talk about how to get out of our own way. Okay. Number two is to discover the power of meditation. So just think about these few things before I completely freak you out about meditation. If you are, are, are one of those people that are just kind of skeptical about it, let me just first share with you a few of the benefits, more creativity, less stress, more compassion, better memory, more positive emotions, long lasting emotional stability and improved focus. In other words, overall improvement of health such amazing benefits, and they truly will materialize with a simple daily habit of mindful meditation. I know, I know, sitting, breathing, not thinking, how is that going to prompt these amazing, much desired outcomes to occur? After being a half-hearted skeptic for quite some time, I'm just going to be honest, there was, I mean, I've heard of meditation since I was in high school. I'm like, oh, that sounds great. I can do this. It's so simple. Ooh, I don't think I can. So it's taken me a long time to really get to the place I am at now. And I have revisited this and revisited this constantly. And maybe you're still in that phase of revisiting. It sounds good, but I don't know, Shannon. I just don't know. You're going to have to really work on me to convince me. I'm not going to try to convince you of anything. I, I Let me just share with you what it is. And you can decide if or how you'll do it. Okay. A couple of years ago, I came to the realization that this simple practice was something that required much conscious effort. In other words, I realized I could not just sit down and voila, all of these wonderful benefits would occur. So I began reading more about it and coupled with the knowledge that we truly do have the ability to master our minds, I began to realize, while I knew I needed to master my mind, that wasn't happening all of the time. For me anyway, it wasn't, especially during times of high stress in my life. And I wanted to change. I wanted to change. And I wanted to know how I could change. I wanted to know how I could master my mind. Because yeah, when everything's going well, it's easy to master your thoughts. It's when those times that you can't control and it seems like everything's out of control and you're exhausted. Those are the times that I wanted to make sure that my mind was in sync with my values so that I didn't have regrets after the fact, after the storm had passed. As I mentioned in last week's newsletter, having read Dan Harris's book, 10% Happier, more than a few aha moments occurred. In fact, it was his initial skepticism that encouraged me to not only read and finish the book, but reread and take ample notes and even keeping the book next to me on my first couple attempts at meditation. Simply put, Harris reminds readers that, quote, mindfulness provides space between impulse and action. So we're not a slave to whatever neurotic obsession pops up into our head, end quote. Now, in basic terms, how is this actually working? I wanted to know. So I found out here is the science behind this idea of the brain being able to not make impulsive actions and taking that breath, that space in between. 
So meditation weakens the me center, which is responsible for triggering our strong emotional reactions when we feel we might be under attack. So it weakens those. So you're thinking it weakens, well, that's not good, but this is good. This is actually a very good thing. I'm going to provide a, a link to the article that shares a lot more de detail about how the brain is changing when someone is meditating, even for the first time, how it changes. I'll provide a link on the show notes. So this is where I'm pulling my information from and it strengthens. So it weakens the me center. So we don't act in, based on our emotions and it strengthens the assessment center of our brains, which serves as the rational part of our brain. So in other words, we are better equipped to act based on rational thought rather than our impulses, which is motivated by emotion and thereby we may regret, regret later. And it really is, it's a muscle. Our brain is this muscle that with meditation, we're focusing our, 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 our thoughts. It's not that we're completely eliminating thoughts, we're not. And I think that sometimes that's a misconception. It's just that we're aware of our thoughts. We're aware of our thoughts. And there's some great specific, very, very simple meditation practices that Dan Harris goes over in his 10% Happier. I highly recommend them. And those are the things that I kept beside me while I was practicing. And I am now currently bowing and doing meditation each day. I'm starting with five minutes and I'm finding that to be very simple, but I wanted to really put a strong foundation under this. And, and so I could really start seeing the benefit and motivation to in increase that time. And I realize, I mean, all of us are busy. I realize that I may not be able to do 20 minutes or 30 minutes every single day if I eventually get to that point, but I need to be able to at least do five or 10 regularly. And I'll let you know how it goes in my thoughts from the editor weekly and, and in my newsletter, but that's where I'm at right now, five minutes every day. And I'm having a wonderful time slowing down and being aware that I can control my thoughts and to take a breath before I make decisions. It's not easy, but it's getting easier. So there are my two cents on meditation. All right. So that's number two. Bring in the benefits of meditation to your life. And don't, real quickly, it doesn't have to be all yogi. If you're not a yogi or into yoga or Pilates or anything like that, don't worry. Just like Dan Harris was saying, just simply sit down somewhere, get comfortable. Sit down on a, in a chair, sit down on your bed, sit down on the floor and put your back against the wall. It does not have to be cross-legged. You don't have to look like yogi. You absolutely don't have to do those kind of things. If you want to do that, I do. That's what's comfortable for me, but I like yoga. Not everyone does. I get that. Trust me. I don't like running. And I know a lot of people like running. So do what comes comfortable. Just sit down and be comfortable. That's all it is. All right. I'm going to take a quick one minute intermission and I will see you on the other side with the last two ideas of how to spring forward. Today's episode is sponsored by Bombas. Bombas makes the most comfortable socks in the history of feet. They've literally rethought every little detail of the sock we wear to make them way more comfortable. I wear them every day. No joke. I go walking with my dogs. I'm putting my boots on to go out in the garden. I put on my Bombas first. I love them. They are so comfortable and are worn around the house like slippers after I take my shoes off when I'm in the house. But these socks do more than just keep our feet cozy. They help give back to the most vulnerable members of our community. Because for every pair of socks you purchase, Bombas donates a pair to someone in need. The generosity of Bombas customers has allowed them to donate over 34 million pairs of socks and counting through their nationwide network of 3,000 plus giving partners. And the impact is more powerful than ever. To those experiencing homelessness, these socks represent the dignity of putting on clean clothes, a small comfort that's especially important right now. Give a pair when you buy a pair and get 20% off your first purchase at bombas.com slash sophisticate. That's bombas, B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash sophisticate for 20% off your first purchase. That's bombas.com slash sophisticate. All right, so welcome back. Number three is to spruce up your wardrobe, whether you are transitioning into spring or fall, knowing that you have the clothes necessary to present your best self on any given occasion is a peace of mind. I, I mean, it just calms me down. I don't know about you. So I can totally forget about what I'm wearing and just do whatever it is that I want to do 
or enjoy myself wherever I am. So we're gonna lighten it up a little bit with number three, obviously. And so if you are a subscriber to either the weekly newsletter of the Simply Luxurious Life or the biannual seasonal shopping guide newsletter, over this past weekend, you did receive the Simply Luxurious Life's sh spring shopping guide. And while I do admit in the newsletter that clothes are not the answer to endless questions in life when it comes to discovering our purpose and finding tranquility in our day-to-day -day lives, they are a means to the end. In other words, how we present ourselves to the world intrinsically affects our mood, our confidence, and the confidence of others in us to complete the job, whatever it may be. So whether you are looking to completely revamp your closet or simply need a few items, start, I would start with just a simple closet assessment. And I'll provide a link to how to successfully do that. It's pretty basic, but I do kind of go through step-by-step -step ways to make sure that it's not done without a great product at the end. In other words, you're gonna end up knowing exactly what you need, what you don't need, and how to go find it. And I will provide a link to that on today's show notes, podcast 29. Then start filling in the gaps. And that's where the shopping guide um, will come in handy. And I will provide a link to that on today's show notes. And if you wish to become a subscriber, just note that you don't have to become a subscriber to the weekly newsletter. If you don't want that every week, you can just subscribe to this biannual newsletter that comes out on March 15th and September 1st of every year, where I navigate the trends. I tell you what's worth splurging on, investing in, and what's worth just saving on, but having some fun with in your closet for that particular season and those trends. And then I, do, then I do also do some shopping for you and you can literally click and shop right from the newsletter. It's that simple. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. But uh, it's kind of fun to see what was going on on the runway six months ago. I always like that part. And just getting inspiration from the looks as well. Again, I will, have, I will have links to that newsletter as well as how to subscribe to the newsletter if that's something you would like. So that's number three, spruce up your wardrobe. And the last one is number four, reinvigorate your eating regimen. Oftentimes when we sit down to write our New Year's resolutions in January, if they have anything to do with eating well, it can be difficult to become motivated about our selection, especially, at least in my experience. I mean, we don't have farmer's markets that are open year round here in Oregon. They shut down usually in October, some places in November. And the ones that I am able to go to don't open up until May and some thankfully in March. So we really are limited for local produce that's fresh. And while there is fresh food, obviously, in the grocery store, it's a lot of it's been shipped in from a long ways away. And so a lot of that flavor is gone or we're paying a lot more for it. So now that spring is upon us, I'm getting really excited. I don't know about you. I actually was working out in my yard over the weekend, even though it was drizzling. I didn't care. I was out in the yard. I was getting wet. My dogs, well, one of my dogs was, Norman loves, Norman loves being outside, period. He will be wet. He will be dirty. And he won't even care. I love him. Um, for this. My other dog, bless his heart, Oscar, is like, um, you're crazy. I'm going to be inside watching you from the window. <laughs> and, and so they have two totally different personalities. But I was outside and I was mowing the lawn and I was picking weeds and I was putting my furniture out. And I'm just so excited. I'm nowhere near close to putting in a garden, obviously, but it's coming and that feels good. And knowing that the farmer's markets are going to be open soon makes me get even more excited. So over the weekend, um, I shared uh, a photo, and you'll see it in today's uh, show notes, of my grocery run for the week. And a few weeks ago, in Thoughts from the Editor, I shared a list of what is my weekly shopping list and how I generally, I genuinely enjoy this errand that I do over the weekend, every weekend. And I don't know, it's just something about going through the fresh produce and picking out, you know, what I'm going to be eating for the rest of the week and talking with the meat counter and picking out a filet of fish or just seeing what's fresh and most fresh and available. I don't know. I just like that. And I take my time. I pick up a bouquet of flowers if I can. And I just enjoy it. It's something about it. And then I'll come home and I'll chop everything up and get it ready for the week. So it makes it really easy throughout the week to get my snacks in order and so on and so forth. But anyway, I show a picture of my grocery run in and it's on Instagram this week. And again, I'll show it on the show notes and kind of get an idea of exactly what um, it looks like. And I'll be honest, there's probably very little change from one week to the other, except when the seasons start changing. Right now, 
For example, I'm really eager to go get some asparagus and some rhubarb for some strawberry rhubarb tarts because they're gonna, they're gonna be one of the first few things that come up in early spring. I love that. And then of course, when summer comes, it's the tomatoes and the berries and oh my goodness. it's just, And that adds to our health, that adds to our health. So have fun picking and choosing your food. Really stick to those outer aisles or go to the, the farmer's market. The cooking does not have to be complicated when the food is high quality. And when you use herbs and olive oil and butter when necessary, bring out the flavors that are already there, intensify them, and that will completely satiate your palate. I will provide a link of how to feed your body well on today's show notes and go through a specific list of foods to include and foods to eliminate from your diet to see the best results. And I'm not talking about losing weight, although that's what you're going to see is happening, but you're going to have a healthy body and that's huge. And when we have a healthy body, we have a healthier mind and we're able to make better decisions and physically be able to do and live the life we wish to live. And that's the best gift we can give ourselves. So that wraps up the four ways to really help ourselves bring forward in a way that is getting us closer to our goals, closer to that life of our dreams. At the core of springing forward is priming the well that is you. Once you know what you value, no matter what changes around you, you will be better equipped to flow with the changes Because as Stephen Covey reminds us, our core principle values shouldn't fluctuate that much, if at all, much like the U.S. Constitution. May you have a wonderful start to the new season. For all of today's show notes, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 29. And do stay tuned because this week's Petit Pleasure, as I teased on this weekend's Instagram post, is going to tempt your taste buds, buds be healthy and so simple to cook. I'll see you on the other side. La Solmonière, madame. Oh my goodness, you have to taste this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, so I, yeah, I know. I, but I, I know. I know. I know. Many of you no doubt recognize. Meryl Streep's voice, and Stanley Tucci in Nora Ephron's beloved film, Julie and Julia. That scene, if you recall, was in the very beginning of the film when Julia Child is in a restaurant with her beloved beloved Paul, and the waiter brings out the sizzling sole manure in that saucepan, strips away the meat from the bone, and she starts to savor it, as does he. Few words needed to be stated. It was that delicious, evidently. And so, of course, I was curious as immediately when I saw this and I was like I would love to make this it's got to be really complicated though it's French and oh my gosh and if Julia Child loves it you know it's going to be a lot to it so I can do this I could do this it's not that difficult it is very very simple when it comes down to quality ingredients so today I'm going to share with you this simple recipe that I adapted from Barefoot Contessa recipe that will leave you umming and eyeing just like Meryl Streep and Stanley Tucci in that particular scene, or should I say Paul and Julia? All right, so let's get started. No further ado, let's dive right into this because trust me, as soon as you get your Dover sole, your sole, your market, you're gonna wanna make this and it will take no more than 10 to 20 minutes and in the middle of the week, you feel like you are in a gourmet restaurant. Trust me, it's that good. All right, let's first go through the ingredients list to make sure you have everything you need. There's really not a lot of foreign components except for making sure you have sole right? All right, so you'll need a fourth a cup of all-purpose flour, kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper, two fresh sole fillets, about three to four ounces each, and just recently at the grocery store, you could get a pound of Dover sole for about eight dollars, and I usually just for two servings, I can get about a half a pound, and I'm golden, so literally three to four ounces is all you need per serving. Then you're going to want three tablespoons of unsalted butter, 
one teaspoon of grated lemon zest, and two small lemons or one large lemon. Now, again, this is serving two people, two people. All right, so those are the ingredients. Now, before you cook your fish and do all of this that uh, we're gonna talk about in the directions, I would actually get your vegetables started. If you're roasting vegetables or you're baking vegetables, whatever you're doing, get them started somewhere because they'll probably take longer than this Dover sole will take because it is so short and so simple. All right, with that in mind, Oh, and maybe you want to pour a glass of wine while you're making this. Just a thought, just an idea. Of course, I mean, it's if you're not a wine drinker, totally dismiss that, but you get the idea. All right. <laughs> um, directions. So number one, first of all, you just simply want to combine about uh, your fourth a cup of flour with your salt and pepper. Just take out a plate, a low, shallow plate, maybe a little bit larger than normal. I usually cut my fillets in half, um, but you can keep them all really long if you'd like that look. It's up to you. Um, so you're combining the salt and pepper with the flour. Then you're going to pat your fillets dry with a paper, dry, uh, paper towel. And then on just one side of the fillet, put a little bit of salt on there. While you're doing that, before you dredge them, go ahead and on your stove, uh, in a skillet, heat up your unsalted butter. So put the three tablespoons of unsalted butter in your skillet and on medium heat, get that butter sizzling. You're gonna wanna have it turn just slightly brown so it's ready to cook those and brown those filet. So while that's heating up, dredge both the filets in the flour mixture and then Transfer immediately to the saucepan. Boom. You put them down one side for two minutes. It takes just about two to three minutes. Seriously, that's all. So you just need to hang out there. Don't go anywhere. It won't take that long before you flip them. Flip them to the other side after two to three minutes. And then while that last side is cooking, you're going to want to put the lemon zest on top of each filet and your lemon juice. And lemon juice can also just go in the pan to flavor the sauce because you're gonna use that sauce as well. So this side also you wanna cook for two to three minutes until lightly brown. Then remove from the pan, put onto your serving dish or your plate, whatever you're gonna eat on, and then the sauce that was in that pan, just simply the lemon and the butter and the juices of the fish are what you're gonna pour right over the top of your fillets. If you want to garnish with a little bit of julienne uh, Italian parsley and slices of lemon, feel free. But that is it. It is so simple, so deceivingly simple for something so delicious. I highly recommend this to impress guests because it will not cause you as a host that much time in the kitchen or simply in the middle of the week when you want to have a delicious meal, but you don't want to slave away in the kitchen. Highly, highly recommend it. In the picture, you'll also note that I have a bottle of wine, a rosé that I paired it with over the weekend. I provide a link to that wine. It's from Provence. It's absolutely fantastic. And it's only $15 a bottle and there's a link to where to get it. It can ship to you. And trust me, it's worth it, especially since we're coming up on spring and summer. I love having a few rosés on hand. This one will not disappoint. For this recipe of Sol Meunier inspired by Julia Child, check out the show notes at the blog, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 29. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Peugeot, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, a recipe, or from time to time, introduce you to an expert who offers insight into how to live simply luxuriously. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up my latest book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, now available on Audible and wherever audiobooks are sold, as well as in paperback and ebook versions. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's guide, which is also available in paperback, ebook, and as an audiobook as well. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog posts, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or cup of morning coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.